way to your dog. One pair of pants later. I'm going to give you some backstory on this. I saw on our off my chest or relationship advice, uh, some young man who was describing his girlfriend in the midst of intercourse. She essentially clamped around him like a koala and whispered some, uh, you know, get me pregnant you know, kind of thing, yeah. which freaked him out. So I was like looking at this and I was thinking, wow, that's, that's interesting. So I go and I look up what they eventually referred to as a breeding kink. And I find this article. So this is the article from utilitarian.net and it's called breeding kink explained complete fetish guide by Catherine Moreland. If you're a man and you impregnate a woman, it's a fetish. Nowadays, social media platforms are swarming with people discussing different fetishes and discovering their favorite kinks in the process. Though some of these kinks get a lot of attention and most adults know all about them, some still remain slightly mysterious and niche. The breeding kink is one such example. So, wait, what? The most mysterious and niche is basically jizzing inside of her. I don't get how that's mysterious or niche. So breeding kink defined. A breeding kink is defined as an extreme attraction to the idea of either getting pregnant or getting someone else pregnant during sex. Generally speaking, people with this kink get off on the idea that every sexual encounter poses a big risk of pregnancy. Aside from the biological aspect, the breeding kink is also based on an imbalance of power. My, my penis just shrank to half its normal resting <laughs> size. Just reading that sentence. <laughs> Are breeding and pregnancy kinks the same? While they may appear quite similar, though these two kinks have one pivotal difference. While breeding is the attraction of the possibility to the possibility of pregnancy, an actual pregnancy kink involves being attracted to someone who is already pregnant. So one is focused on the act of impregnation and the other on the person who is expecting a child. If you have like a breeding kink, and you're uh, a man and you're with a woman and she's got the same one and you guys engage in that and then it results in her getting pregnant does that then mean you also should probably have a pregnancy kink you got to make sure you got the the coordinated fetishes right yeah you should have that lined up so okay look if i get you pregnant because that's a that's a kink of mine then once mm -hmm. you are pregnant i'm still going to be attracted to you i'm just going to like i'm going to change lanes and we're going to be on this road now. And know? then you'll have to change lanes to the, you know, the MILF kink as well. Yeah. And then after the baby is born, then yeah, there is that. So we should probably st and plan on staying together have, for a while. And maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have constructed the uh, nuclear family again from a series of kinks. <laughs> yeah. The biblical origin of the breeding kink. Just like many other kinks, breeding can also be traced back to the Bible. <laughs> You're supposed to do something like this, or something like this, Ooh. or maybe a little of this. For one, the Bible endows men with dominance and ownership over women, making them seem like the superior sex. Such a power relation implies that a woman's only purpose is to bear children, and she must submit to her man however many times he demands it. In essence, the woman's body is never fully her own. For one, a man dominating a woman and using her just for impregnation is at the base of this fetish. Moreover, the kink is all about the woman's loss of bodily autonomy and any type of control, both of which are concepts the Bible heavily promotes. From the biblical origins discussed above, it is clear that breeding Not seems to be one of the most misogynistic kinks out there. Aside from promoting women as inferior to men, it also Not. advertises harmful patriarchal practices that many women still have to face every day. Oh, for the love of God. So when a woman has the kink, she she's actually not supposed to have it because it's harmful to her. So ladies, if the idea of getting impregnated by a man turns you on, it means that you are a slave to the patriarchy, I guess. 
All in all, you could say that this fetish fully depends on the couple enjoying it. If both people consent and no one feels pressure to take part in the fantasy, the misogynistic aspect ceases to matter. But it's still there. They want to impregnate me, I know it. Give me 10 good men and some climbing spikes. I'll impregnate the bitch. That's all they think about. Even though many people are unaware of this fact, breeding became popular in the U.S. when slavery was at its peak. That's bullshit. People have always bred. What are you? Breeding, having babies, it it spiked in popularity because of slavery. What? <laughs> like they were like, were there like ten people on Earth until slavery, and then they were like, you know, we should breed. That sounds like it's. Have you heard of the latest craze? It's having sex and making babies. <laughs> well, I want to do that. Twenty-three skidoo. She's taking okay. slavery and turning it. She's fetishizing it. That's what I'm getting from this. On the one hand, this dynamic emphasized that the masters were fully in charge. The slaves had no bodily autonomy, meaning that the masters could do anything they wanted to them, anything, without facing any repercussion. There were legal prohibitions against this. Legal prohibitions against mistreating female slaves. We do whatever we wanted to male slaves, but there was laws against mistreating female slaves. Moreover, fertility was a strong selling point that masters used when going to slave auctions. They would present their female slaves as attractive, willing, and extremely fertile in order to sell them at a higher price. To achieve that, the masters would often rape the women at the auctions themselves, showing how easy it is to dominate them. Uh, this feels really fetishistic. Okay. Harmful interpretations of the breeding kink. Breeding has a strong biological aspect that is often the biggest turn on for those who indulge in it. This aspect is the possibility of pregnancy, which leads to the continuation of the human race. Uh. So it is clear that some men see breeding as the best way to leave a mark on humanity. In an effort to do so, they select their partner based on desirable genetic attributes, including their physical appearance, for them, the emotional and intimate aspect of the kink is not at all important. We're just constructing our villain. This horrible, horrible man, you know, just takes what he wants. He just takes it. He just takes it. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. Oh, you're going to rape me, aren't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, I can tell. This is what you do. You know, and, yeah. Mm. She starts breathing heavy. <laughs> Please don't, don't, but, but, and, but she doesn't really run away. Issues in anti-choice areas. Many countries in the world still have strict laws that stifle women's reproductive rights. These laws often prohibit the termination of unwanted pregnancies. As such, they force women to either give birth to a child they don't want or break the law. Laws like these affect impoverished and minority women the most as they have no resources to oppose them. In these parts of the world, breeding kinks can become harmful for women. I, I don't think they have time to think well, if about... their breeding kinks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The assumption here is that somebody with a breeding kink would be less careful. Or have every and, intention of getting pregnant. And but but have an abortion. And that's a little freaking disturbing. This um, is like city woman shit. And they'll move here and bring their shitty families and their cultured shitty kids will hang out with our kids and expose them to their shitty ways. In such cases, people should pay close attention to these risks. Moreover, they should focus on the power play aspect of the kink if they want to avoid an unwanted pregnancy. If they don't, only the woman will have to suffer the consequences. Okay, guys, only the woman suffer the consequence of an unattended pregnancy. Men don't have reproductive rights. There is a lawsuit that established both that consent to parenthood is separate from consent to sex. And for men, it doesn't matter if you don't consent to sex. You have consented to parenthood. So men don't have reproductive rights because reproductive rights literally are the ability to consent to a sexual activity, but not consent to taking responsibility for the resultant child of that sexual activity. 
breeding didn't get popular until <laughs> slavery. Yeah, I could see the slave owners standing around with all their slaves. Uh, and then one how of them is just that out of the blue their... says, you know what else we should do now that we have slaves? <laughs> <laughs> we should breed. We should breed. <laughs> <laughs>